and welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you don't need to like, follow or subscribe. I just put the videos out there where I can and have a jolly good time doing so. Well, thanks for joining me today because today we're gonna to talk about how we're creating these magnificent roadways. This layout was never really gonna feature any complicated roadways. It's really all about seeing those trains running across the countryside. But there are some key features where we are going to have some roadways. This feature roadway that you saw in a previous video was always going to be the key thing. We just needed to achieve it. A small bit of asphalt transitioning onto the gravel or dirt road. And as you saw, we've achieved it quite nicely. And we probably have everything we needed to carry on to do our car park to the station, which is just going to wrap around a curve here, open up, and away we go. And everything that comes in the Woodland Scenics Road System Beginner's Kit, truthfully, is all I needed, up to and including this boat ramp thing at the other end. So I needed to purchase a few additional things. But let's just talk about the basics of how we're gonna be building this road here. Before we get started, let's just talk about the kit itself because there's only a few key things we need to discuss and away we go. So if you purchase this kit for about $50, I think it is, it's got all the basic things you're gonna to need to get started and do a reasonable amount of roadway. As always with Woodland Scenics products, the instructions are absolutely superb. Plus they have lots of YouTube videos, so please do make good use of those. I don't wanna bore you with the detail, but we'll step you through. Basically, they give you some lengths of this tape that you need to mark out where you want the roads to be. And then you're basically mixing up a compound like you would with concrete, pour it in, screed or smooth it over, let it dry, and you end up with a beautiful road. They also give you a small asphalt top coat, which is basically a paint that you've got a nice sponge brush to come on and then just lightly apply it and away you go. However, a couple of things worth mentioning. If you are trying to chase something specific rather than just the black road, I would highly recommend to you to make the additional purchase of these. Now, as I said before, you do get the asphalt. There's a small container of that and that'll be plenty. So you don't really necessarily need this, but for a couple of dollars, it's worth having it. You also have the concrete. So why do I need it? Well, as you can see with this little sample thing I've been working on, actually it's this one as a matter of fact, I'm working on a two to one ratio, meaning that I'm adding two parts of concrete to one part of asphalt. It's not accurately measured, just sort of a blob, blob, and then a blob, mix them together with the brush until I find the right color of gray that I need and I'm using slightly different colors of asphalt depending on where I am. And that's why it gets important today. Also in the kit, you're going to have your little scoop for measuring out, and in there you will have your gravel. The gravel comes in two parts. The first is this type of sand type of material, which will be your gravel. The second part, which I've put into this little jar, which basically looks a bit like the Pico brake dust, but this is basically your kind of dirt texture the part that you would run across the middle of a dirt track and or on the edges. And it's in a tiny little packet and a little bit goes a very, very long way. The other key ingredient you're gonna need is the actual powder that makes the roadway. So think of it a little bit like your concrete that you're about to mix up. You get a substantial bag to do what I have easily done here and enough to carry a, an entire roadway all the way down to the boat ramp. So. Let's be realistic. You can cover comfortably about one to one and a half meters of standard dual lane roadway. However, as you saw in the sand dunes video, that product isn't just good for roads, it's good for other stuff. And the product that that powder is, is a product called Smooth It. So for $22 in Australia, I can purchase an additional amount, which is basically what you see in this container here. And that's gonna see me right out with many other projects. And it's a highly pliable, product to use, not just on roads, in any other application. It's a little bit of a finer product than you're gonna get with some of those Plaster of Paris and Sculpted molds, and I think it's quite handy to have. It stores indefinitely. But here comes the real important thing that's not so clear in the instructions. It's the ratio and the way you're going to mix it. 
I've even made a note here, but basically what you need to appreciate with the scoop that they give you, this is the equivalent of two teaspoons. So in the instructions, they talk about adding four teaspoons of water to six teaspoons of the smoother powder. The amount that you mix up depends on how much you can cover. The stuff does dry reasonably quickly, so it's best to sort of just work in some reasonable, manageable sections, and you'll be able to judge that. Also, when you need to introduce ramps or something like that, especially as I did on the crossing, you might need to find in the sections that are a bit steeper, you'll mix it up a little bit thicker and vice versa, a little bit thinner when you're just smoothing out or just doing something general. You add the smoother powder into a cup, then obviously you're going to add your water to it and let it stand for two minutes so the water can literally soak into that mixture. Then you'll need to stir your mixture for a solid one minute, and then you can just pour it in and apply it to the framework that you've already taped out and marked out accordingly. Then you'll take the supplied smoother and scrape it over to get that nice, beautiful finish. Let it dry. When it's dry, you can come in if there are any slight imperfections. They give you a little piece of sandpaper, just a quick tickle. I actually haven't really had to use that yet. That was for a different purpose I've been using this for. Everything's lovely. Let it dry overnight. Then you can come along and then mix up your top coats and just liberally brush them on. That's the entire process. And I want to bore you with all of that. It's all there. The kit's quite good. And all I've done, the difference is I've just ended up needing some more of the smoother powder. And I obviously have these bottles. And by the time the layout's finished, I would say I'd be lucky to have used a quarter of those bottles. So it does go a long way. I did need more tape. I'm quite convinced I've got enough tape, but because I want to do a couple of tricky little things and some things with footpaths later on, probably in the oil refinery section, I thought I might as well just pick some more up and then I can just carry on and go. Well, that's all we need. Let's get started on this little project. Now, the most important step, whether you're building a model railway or building a house, measure, measure, measure. Measure twice, cut once. Well, it's a bit the same here. You definitely wanna make sure you've got things in the right place here to make your life just a little bit easier. As you can see, I've taken my appropriate measurement for the road. So here's the plan of attack, what we're going to do. Where we made the little entrance for it here, I'm actually gonna raise this section over and add in a pedestrian crossing here. And so people who have come in and walked along can actually safely cross here and visit this majestic Christmas tree, which most likely I think I'm gonna to have to construct from scratch. You'll notice while there was a bit of a mess of lines because I had to keep remeasuring, what we've ended up with is two lines. Now one marked R is going to be where the road's gonna be, and then the other one is F for footpath. And why that's important is the footpath gets built on top of the actual road. So what we need to do is we need to lay this all down in one hit, that's the road. And then once it's dried, we'll take back over to lift up and create the footpath. Once we come into the car park, we're pretty much gonna keep it quite open. We can see we've created a little lip here, including a little section where if they do need to drive and get something onto the platform from this end, it can be done. And we'll probably put some telescopic or foldable bollards there so we don't get any hoons just driving up onto our beautiful platform. We'll put a series of car parking here and we'll also got enough room to leave what would be the access road traveling in behind the station for anything that needs to happen back that way. We can just talk briefly about this type of paving tape, which is what Woodland Scenics is calling it. It's a wonderful product. And as you would have seen the time-lapse video when I worked on it before, it's quite simple. You're literally just peeling it back like tape, laying it down where you need, and that's pretty much it. Once it's dried and finished, you can just lift it up and it just disappears. So, and you can actually reuse it again. It does stay quite sticky, but look, it's really just cheap enough to get some more. It's very easy to manage as well. You don't have to use scissors in some sections if you just wanna run out and just cut it. It's very simple. There's just one slight problem I seem to have with it all the time. When it comes to getting the tape off of it, it's a damn right nuisance. Even if we take a blade and start picking at it, for some reason, it just doesn't want to lift easily. So that's just my warning to you about it, but you'll be just fine, don't panic.
Just something to point out, like I said, the tape can be hard to pull off. So what I like to do is, where possible, just keep working and pulling with the tape. Because it's a soft, spongy material, that's why you can't get a grip and try and pinch it off. So just working with it while you can just sort of pull it off and cut it and keep pulling it, it's a top tip, save you a stack of time. Well, we're all marked out for the first coat. Again, I don't mind just putting a little truck down just to check. Maybe just a bit of a line in the middle there. It seems sort of indicative that there'd be enough room for it to go on either side. So we're meeting a bit of a scale requirement there. And it looks great. Whether or not you're going to do a series of raised car park gutters and perhaps a raised little pedestrian walk to come across, that can all be done later. This is just the initial pour now. So we've now got a road bed that we can build upon accordingly. And as you can see, I haven't marked out the footpaths because we're gonna come back to that later. And then there's a trick that I'm gonna share with you about how Woodland Scenics recommends building up these footpaths. Okay, so let's get this base layer down. Again, it's gonna be difficult because we're covering such a large area because the smoothing product is designed to do the roadways as we smooth it to give you that finish. Now that's gonna be a bit difficult, but it is a car park and it doesn't matter that it might have a natural deviation running in the middle or wherever because we'll add some storm water grates and things like that as we go along remember even when it's dried it's very very manageable so it's a 60 40 ratio or two to three uh, in the old numbers so basically what we're going to be working on is a 60 40 or two to three ratio is basically where we're going to be at However, the instructions aren't going to cover what we need to do, so we're just going to ad-lib this as required. Again, I like to keep that smooth it stuff in one of these airtight containers. I just think it, it helps it from clumping and going nasty, especially since I'm not going to be using it every single day. These plastic disposable containers that you can pick up are absolutely fantastic. A quick wipe out and you can go again, but whatever's working for you. So there is actually a calculator on the Woodland Scenics website for doing this. I just know that if we mix the default mixture that they need us to mix, I'm going to be able to achieve this. So if that was the case and we break it down, that's one section, two, three, four, five, six, just under probably seven of what I need. So typically what we're going to do, we're going to take three spoons of this to two spoons of the water. Remember, this is two teaspoons in an actual mix. So that's the equivalent of us getting six teaspoons and four teaspoons respectively. Now we need to wait for two minutes for that to soak in. <clears throat> now while we're waiting, I do prefer to use these smaller containers for the bits and pieces that we do. It's just because we've got such a large section we're gonna cover at the moment, so be it. But certainly as we come back to do our ramps and the footpath sections, we'll be back to the smaller container, which is just perfect for what we need. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're just going to mix it all up. Right, here we go. And there we go. That's our base coat put down. I don't know if you can see it from the camera. It's not too bad. There are a few small little lines there, which really you wouldn't worry too much about. But this is where we come back and just sand them off just to give it that finish. And again, I'm covering such a large area. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky. 
Again, where we've got that beautiful tape that we can just run along, that's perfect. We don't actually have to touch that in any way. But we are, of course, going to come back to raise up our pedestrian crossing. That's quite dry at the moment. If you do need to form any potholes or do anything, now is the time. But this is basically in another 20 minutes dry enough that you can come along and sand and carry on. I am going to add a little pothole. Again, if you did end up with some left over, do think ahead because a great thing like I need to do is go back and fix up some sand germ. So if you do have some, you can always reapply it or tidy up a little bit later on as necessary. It's a very, very workable product. Welcome back. So it's actually been 24 hours. I've just been busy with some other jobs, but you'll notice I've just uh, put a few little sections of tape down just to indicate some areas that I'm not 100% happy in that just need a little bit of attention. <clears throat> One of those includes the actual roadway that, as you can probably see, features some bubbles. Now, the easy way to sort that out before we start sanding or doing anything is I'm actually just going to just pour it back on and just smooth back over because I've got to correct a few pieces here. I have started to create the footpath here. Um, and built the two layers up, which I'm going to come back and talk to you when we do the rest. But I'm just going to lay a bit of a <clears throat> base layer down and then we'll come back and then we'll keep talking about what we need to do to carry on. As mentioned in the sand dune video, the stuff once mixed up certainly has a distinctive smell like a children's favourite candy here in Australia called Whiz Fizz. I think it smells absolutely delightful compared to that nasty copy Dex. So if we look really closely in these close-up pictures, you can see that while we've got a nice smooth finish from where you are, you can see it's not quite done. And this is where we're just gonna take our sandpaper, just give it a light sand, just so it all blends in and stays flat. But we're not gonna do that yet because we still need to work on these footpaths. Now I was gonna put a raised section in to put some trees or shrubs in as a gap, as you see in shopping center car parks. But I think I'm going to leave it empty because you never know what trucks need to swing in. And uh, obviously when it's quiet, sometimes a car comes in with a caravan or something and needs the double spot. So we're going to keep it nice and empty. It's a quiet type of station. So the parking will always seem a little overkill for what they necessarily need. Plus the footpath, while well, we'll come across to the Christmas tree section, they could still, if they've had to unfortunately hitchhike and do the walking and come over, will open up, clearly be able to walk across the car park, so there'll be no spots there. I may well put zebra crossing or stripes down, but basically they just walk across and then they can come over to the platform. So let's now have a bit of a chat about creating the footpath situation. So basically the trick when we're creating the footpaths is we use this tape here to become, this is going to be the thickness and the road height. And so to create it to the footpath height, we need to be double that to create that extra bit of height in it. And that's all we're doing, just stacking the tape on top of each other. As always, one of the greatest tools in the world is going to be your hand. Just a little bit of moisture, and I don't mind admitting, I'll lick the end of my finger, just rub it on, smooth it on, you'll get a lovely finish. So what we're gonna do is let it dry. We're gonna come back the next day. We're gonna pull the tape off. We'll have our footpath and our road. Um, but before we get down to the final sand and smooth everything out, getting ready for our painting or top coats as we need, what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna spend a moment to smooth a little bit of the ramp system that would come up onto the crossing. And the whole idea is we're gonna have asphalt, concrete, crossing, concrete, back to asphalt. And I'm thinking I'm gonna change the color of the asphalt from this color to a slightly darker one, like it just looks like it was freshly laid. I had custom made, the people that made my road stripes, I got them to do them in a specific configuration in the yellow to use with the car park. So we'll see how that goes. Well, here we are. And now it is time we need to get on with laying some asphalt. Just before we do, 
this is a very manageable product to use. If you need to carve something in or do something at a later point, not a problem at all. But just to get the colors a little bit right, I've managed to pick up these sewer cover sets uh, that have come from the UK, I believe. Someone's obviously got a machine that can uh, etch and laser print them. And as you can see, it's a reasonable type of product. I only need one of these great covers and I obviously want to give it a bit of a brown, almost rusty kind of look on it, which we're going to be sitting there. But I just want to at least get the geometry right before we do it. Now, some of these other stormwater grates and that I think are going to look good, but we can come along and apply those later. But this one, I'm keen to just make sure it's got a reasonably flush fit because if they've just tarmacked this car park, which is what we're going to aim for, we want it to look reasonably good. As with any of these things, sometimes you will need to clean them up with a file just where you've cut from the actual frame of where they were printed or cut. And that fits in exactly as per the little divot that I left for it. So I don't actually have to sand it out or do anything. We can literally just carry on nicely, which is fantastic. So we'll leave that there because it's going to need a little bit of painting. Woodland Scenics gives you this tremendous little brush to uh, apply the product. And because it's a thicker product, it means if there's a few indiscretions, you can get around and massage the product into it. Now that's fantastic, as you can see, for building roadways, nice and smooth, and it will texture and level itself out nicely. Because we're doing a parking lot, I thought I might go for something a little bit bigger to get a little bit of a better application. It won't really matter and you've got a really good working time with the product. You'll notice I unscrewed the lids. That's because the little pop out squirty sections that are available to you in the bottle, they do dry up after all and they can be a pain trying to unclog, hence what you're seeing there. But unscrewing them is a better way to go, but live and learn, that's what it's all about. So as we lay it down, if we just use the brush here, you'll see we're literally just like you would with anything, painting it away and working the material around. Again, we've got a very large area to cover here and I'm putting it on quite liberally, liberally knowing there are some indiscretions we'll need to work through. So as you can see by a few little mistakes here, it is an exceptionally hot day here today, 35 degrees Celsius. So in this room, we're probably sitting at just on about 28 degrees. So it is quite warm and drying exceptionally fast. But you can see by the time you've got it spread out and laid where you want it, so be it. Just be careful you don't have too many areas that are built up heavily on the edges if you're going to be laying some guttering down and don't worry too much if you spill up onto the footpath because that concrete will go over and cover it as you can see it's a thick enough material so this really won't take long at all to dry to give you an example when we were redoing bits here this whole section was actually surprisingly fast with the covering on top Okay, I don't want to hold you up with this next bit. So what we're going to be doing is doing this guttering. As I mentioned before, this is the knock kit that I've been using. Yes, it's HO, but it does work quite well. I will just point this out. As I said, it comes on this sort of laser cut. It's almost like a cardboard type of material. What's really great about it is just a few gentle uh, presses and you'll get this uh, nice bend in it. What I just wanted to quickly point out though is there is only, only two sides to worry about. Now, if we just get in nice and close here, so when it comes to cutting the straight bits off and or even the curved bits, there's a couple of ways to do it. Yes, you can use your side cutters, but it is a reasonably thick type of material. So what I find better, as you can see, there's some slight gaps in the middle of each section. So I like to just take a nice clean blade and then run it across. It does work a lot better. The other thing worth mentioning is if you look carefully, on one side, there's nothing. On the other side, there's nothing. But the other two, there are the little lines to indicate your um, joins but you'll notice that it's in two colors. So as you can imagine, the darker side you want down to face the roadway 
and the lighter almost concrete is, you've got it right, we wanna match where our footpath is. At least that's what the picture on the box is indicating. And if that's what the box is indicating, well, guess what? And that's exactly what we're gonna be aiming for. Very happy with how this has come up. I'll get a closer zoom up for you later, but that has sloped perfectly for what I'm trying to do. When I was creating the expansion joint in the concrete footpath here, on this particular one, which I'm not super happy about, but was doing what I did at the time, I literally just took a, a felt tip pen. I took it along, I did a line, and it wasn't too bad. Unfortunately though, it did have quite a bit of bleed coming out of it. And as a result, to sort of dull it down a little bit as well, I also took a little bit more of the concrete and mixed it up with some water to sort of uh, dilute it and then wash it and brush it over. Never been 100% happy about this, and until that landscaping's in, we won't worry too much. What I'm doing though to carry on now, which I think looks a little bit more realistic and especially gives some excellent depth, and more than anything is giving me the detail I'm looking for, is of course to use a mechanical pencil or a pacer, as we call them. The Paper Mate pacer is what I'm using here. And this is actually uh, the, my first one I had when I went to school. So it must be at least about 30 years or more old now. And it's doing a tremendous job. Now, <clears throat> what I'm doing, of course, if you wanna get crazy with your scale measurements and making sure each slab is exactly right, you're gonna get a much, much better result. I will attest to that. Basically what I'm going on though at the moment is we've got for the little gutter sections, it's basically for every one, two, one, two sections that we're working on is where I'm doing the line. And rather than trying to match the line to the gutter mark, I'm just setting it back a bit. So as I get to each second line, I come back probably about two, three mil, draw my line and try and keep it kind of consistent to the way they would have built it when they were pouring the concrete in. It's not perfect, but I think as you can see, particularly if we just come in and zoom in a little bit, that's not looking too bad. Join me now while we just add a couple more. Well, I've got you in nice and close here. A few little scuffs and marks that are here that need to be colored accordingly. I'm gonna come back with, with a fine paintbrush and a small pot of paint in the similar color as necessary. That one actually needs to be concrete, but while I got a little black pen here, we might just touch it up there for a minute, but we will, we'll touch that up with the concrete. It's gonna look a lot more defined. One, two. There's a small blemish here, so we may as well make the line where that blemish is. Now, as we're gonna come down to these sections here, it's up to you how you're gonna break it up and how they may have poured that slab accordingly. But we'll blend that as needed. This one's a little bit trickier. This is quite an indentation there, but if I was concreting, I certainly would have wanted to have kept this section as straight as possible. Again, the backfill that we're using here, I'm not too sure just yet, but we'll certainly come to that as we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that now does conclude this video. I certainly do hope you've enjoyed. A couple of things I'd just like to share with you. First of all, regarding these arrows, of course I'm not too happy with them at all. When I did actually order my uh, decals I required for the road markings, I ordered what I wanted and the particular seller offers them in yellow and white. So uh, I got the key ones I wanted to do, the car park, always, I always wanted to do it in yellow, so I'm very happy with how that did turn out and the white ones are what I want. But the arrows I wanted and all the other signs that I'm missing are in white, not in yellow. I think I might come back and reorder what I need in the yellow set just to correct a couple of things off. It's quite easy as you've seen in the time-lapse, I've sort of lifted things off and relayed down 
not a big problem at all. Very happy with how our stormwater grates have uh, gone in at the moment. And we'll add a bit more once we've got a building and I know where down pipes and things like that are going. A handy little tip I just want to part with you on is when you buy these sheets and you look at them and you can see where I've peeled stuff off. If you said to me, hang on a minute, I don't actually see anything that's on that sheet at all. All you need to do is if we come in on this particular camera shot here is hold these things up to some light and everything becomes as clear as day and you can easily weed away what you need. So now you've seen how it's done. The car park isn't as half as smooth as what my road was, but that was because the tape and when we use the smoothing tool, it all comes together on the one level. We're covering quite a sparse area here. Now I could have done it in sections. That is an option perhaps you might like to consider. And so from here, we're actually gonna continue the road and lay a bit more down around the back end of the station. I thought I might slide in a bit of a bus stop, which I've still got the decals for here and uh, maybe the taxi stop and the bus stop respectively, which might be a nice little addition where we could sort of shuttle directly off the platform and those taking the public uh, transportation or what have you can go off. And we do have a little hidden tunnel at the back corner that they could go out on. So until the next one, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. Toodles.